Can you see the problem here? Let's uh, quickly run through this code. We have a current date for today, and we have an empty array that we're going to fill with some days after today until five days in the future. So while our current date is less than our final date, we're going to add another day to it and save it in the array. And over here, I dump the contents of that array. This array map will print all dates in this format. So pop quiz, what's going to be the output here? I'll tell you right away, it's gonna be empty. Okay, so why does this happen? Let me explain. Our current date here, is an object that's always changing. Every time we add a date interval to it, we're actually changing the original object. In other words, when we're creating our final date variable over here, we're not creating a new object, we're changing our current date object and create a reference to that same object called final date. And that's quite an issue because in the next line we say, while the current date is smaller than the final date. Well. That's of course not going to do anything because these two variables essentially point to the same object. And this is the way PHP works. Objects are passed by reference and not by value. Now, one way of dealing with this particular problem is something that many date libraries do for you. They provide a clone or a copy method that you can use before performing operations on a date so that you know you won't make any changes to the original object. But of course, there is no copy or clone method in PHP's datetime implementation. And besides that, it's quite cumbersome having to call the copy method every time you're doing an operation on a date object that might change that object. And so PHP has a date time immutable class. Immutable basically means that the original object can never change. PHP will prevent you from doing so. So when you call add on the current date here, instead of changing the original object, PHP will create a copy of the current date and will apply the changes on that newly created object. Basically what we could do manually with a copy method, but then behind the scenes. So that's the benefit of immutable classes. Let's rerun this code and you'll see that we end up in an infinite loop now. And that's because right now, like I said, any operation on daytime immutable won't change the current object. We'll actually have to make some changes in our while loop here so that we always update the current date reference to our newly created object. Let's rerun our code now and you can see that it works. So that's the main benefit of immutable objects. They give more certainty that nothing unexpected will happen. And sure, you need to restructure your code a little bit to accommodate for that behavior, uh, but it's much easier to do than to manually copy uh, methods all over the place. So now let's talk about read-only classes, because in essence, they serve kind of the same purpose as immutable classes. They prevent object properties from being changed unintentionally. Now, the difference between read-only and immutable classes is that read-only classes only take care of a subset of things that immutable classes do. They prevent data from being overwritten, but users still have to take care of making copies themselves. In other words, you get the certainty that data won't be overwritten, but if you want to do more, you'll have to implement it manually. And that makes sense because PHP's datetime immutable class is also just an implementation of datetime that takes care of copying objects for you behind the scenes. Now, implementing such an immutable method shouldn't be too hard. So let's start with a simple example and we'll refactor from there on out. Let's say we add a public function over here called withName that will create a new user object, a copy of the original one, but with its name changed. But as you can see, this isn't possible because our properties are read-only. Yeah, that's an issue. It's an issue because oftentimes when using read-only classes, uh, you actually want this kind of behavior. It's a very powerful tool to be able to make changes. But we cannot make a clone change a property and return it because read-only means that once a property is set, you can never change it anymore, even on clones. But we can solve this problem. Let's say we remove this clone over here and instead of cloning an object, we're actually going to create a new one. Because remember, once we constructed a read-only user, we cannot change its data anymore, but we can change data that we're passing into this constructor. And it looks like it works. 
However, you can imagine this is quite a lot of work if you want this behavior for multiple properties. In a previous video, I mentioned how read-only classes are useful to get rid of boilerplate getters. Uh, and now we're stuck with adding with methods again. So there's no real gain unless we can abstract this behavior somehow. So let's do that. Let's take it step by step. First, let's rename this function to a generic with function, meaning that we want to be able to accept any number of properties and not just the name. And here's a neat little trick in PHP that you might not know. Uh, you can use the rest operator to get a dynamic amount of properties in a function. But on top of that, you can call this function using named arguments. And the rest operator, it will gather that input into an array where the keys are the names of the arguments and the values are the actual input. We can also do it the other way around. Instead of creating a new user object manually, we can use the spread operator which looks the same, but works in the other direction. We can use it to spread the contents of an array into a function call. And PHP will actually treat the array keys as argument names. So now we have values that we want to override. And in this case, that's only the name. And next we want to add the default values that we don't want to override as well. For example, in this case, we're not specifically providing email, meaning that we should copy it from the original object. So here's the second trick that you might not know about. In PHP, you can combine two arrays together using the plus operator. A PHP will only add elements to the first array if they weren't already present. So it's a perfect way of saying add the original values to our array of data, but only if they aren't specified by the input values and thus shouldn't be changed. Let's rerun our code and indeed we can create an object of our original user object. The email address is kept but the name is overwritten and the original user wasn't changed. Now, we can add as many properties as we want to our with method, thanks to the rest and spread operators. So we could also say that we want to override both name and email within the same call. Okay, so one more step in cleaning up this code is to extract all of it to a trait. And let's call it with. We'll copy over our method and let's change the return type to static and do some more cleaning up as well and use the trait in our user. Let's rerun our code and it still works. Now, there are some downsides to this approach. You don't have auto-completion in your with call. So you need to know which properties are available on an object, that, that's some overhead. You probably want to add some more checks to make sure that you're not passing unknown properties. And of course, uh, this simple approach requires all properties to be listed in the constructor. But there are ways around that by using reflection, but that's a topic for another day. But on the other hand, it can save a lot of time, especially if you're heavily relying on read-only classes in cases, for example, for data transfer objects or value objects. Finally, there has been some talk amongst core developers uh, to actually add a way of overwriting read-only properties while cloning an object, which would of course be the dream. But until then, we'll have to do with a more dynamic solution. Uh, you decide if you want to use it or not. Uh, let me know in the comments and also go check out this next video. <laughs>